and you'll always have the money to pay the way. And at first, it'll be smooth going. You'll say, boy, I've made the right choice. As we journey through life, we often find ourselves in moments of waiting. Waiting for dreams to come true, waiting for the right timing, and waiting for the next chapter to unfold. And Jesus promises us that if we're going through a wait waiting season, He knows what it feels like to wait upon the Lord. The world does not see patience as a position of strength but rather as a position of weakness, of wanting, of lack. We live in a society where everybody wants everything instantly. But have you noticed how those things do not last? Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Because waiting is where faith actually becomes necessary. I mean, think about it. A God of immediate gratification requires no faith. It's in the waiting and the silence where faith actually develops. And so... And waiting can sometimes feel like a roadblock to our momentum and ambition, forcing us to slow down and reconsider our approach. Satan sees the temperament of some in the world who profess the truth, and he will tempt them by throwing quick fixes in their path. He knows that if they do not overcome their natural temperament, they will stumble and fall by loving and worshipping their idols. Satan's plan is often accomplished in those who do not know Christ. The strong love of the world overcomes, or swallows up, the love of the truth. The kingdoms of the world are offered to them, and they eagerly grasp their treasure and think they are wonderfully prospered. Satan triumphs because his plan has succeeded. They have given up the love of God for the love of the world. Do you know what the last thing he says to them is? Wait. Wait. Wait in Jerusalem and I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, right? Waiting is just a part of the deal. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Any good teacher will not provide information to students who already have the knowledge. If they already know it, they would not need the instruction. James 1 verse 3 says, You know that the testing of your faith produces patience. This verse is not teaching something new. James was telling the people of Israel what they already understood about trials. They test our faith. This produces patience in seasons of waiting. Testing your patience is something that God allows. It usually happens right before a big breakthrough. This is the time period where you have done everything you have been asked to do. But now God is going to ask you to just sit and wait for the big breakthrough to occur. And I want to tell you something. If you start running from the Lord, the devil will always have a boat there for you. And you'll always have the money to pay the way. And at first it'll be smooth going. You'll say, boy, I've made the right choice. I know I'm not doing God's will, but I'm doing what I want to do. And I know that I have made the right choice. Don't underestimate your enemy. Be sober, be alert, and cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Your enemy will cease the opportunity to swoop in during your time of vulnerability. But after a while, you're going to start running into some rough seas. Then the storms and the hurricanes and the tornadoes and the rocks and the reefs are going to come. No man ever turned away from God and found happiness and peace and joy that was permanent and lasting. But not you. You have been crucified with Christ and no longer live, but Christ lives in you. The life you now live in the body, you live by faith in the Son of God. Jesus, who loved you and gave himself for you, Blessed are you who remain steadfast under trial, for when you have stood the test you will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. And if you wait for the Lord, you shall renew your strength. You will mount up with wings like an eagle. You shall run and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. Waiting. It's in these moments of anticipation that we learn valuable lessons about faith, patience, and humility. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. When a tree is planted, a seed is sown. It takes some time to develop and turn into a young plant. Then it starts to grow. Later, in the right season, the full-grown tree gives fruit. No force or compulsion can make it happen any sooner. The determination of the tree's root to go deeper will help it grow stronger and bigger. The Bible says we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season. 
whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever we do shall prosper. Notice the verse says in due season, not immediately. See, all this is supposed to teach us something, and I don't want you to miss it today. Waiting is an essential part of maturing. And if you're unwilling to wait, you will not mature. We, as Christians, spend our lives absorbing hit after hit, trial after trial. Sometimes it feels like there is no rest. But our waiting periods are designed for us to rest in the Lord. So embrace it. And victory will be ours. If you and I get tired of waiting for God to show up and remove the veil, what happens is we leave the appointed spot where Jesus is and we say, you know what, I haven't encountered Jesus in a while, maybe Jesus isn't there. And we go about our way and we don't know when he will actually show up and we'll actually have a moment of experiencing the veil being removed from our eyes and saying, that is God where we're moved to wonder, we're moved to terror, to assurance, and to a sense of surrender. Jesus told the parable of the four soils in Mark 4 verse 1 to 9. In it, the seed of the word of God is sown, and some falls on the path and birds quickly take it away. Satan immediately comes and takes away the word which was sown in people. Satan snatches the word because he hates faith which the word produces. He tries to stop the tree from maturing. Paul expresses his concern for the faith of the Thessalonians like this. I sent to learn about your faith, for fear that somehow the tempter had tempted you and our labor would be in vain. 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 5. Paul knew that Satan's desire is to choke off the faith of people who have heard the word of God and who are waiting in faith for what God has promised. How many of you are waiting on something right now in your life? Well, this message is for everybody, isn't it? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can I tell you something? If you can't learn how to be happy while you wait, you are gonna have one miserable life. You know why? We spend more time waiting than we do anything else. But like the slow, tedious growing process of a tree from a seed to maturity, we too are required to have patience while waiting for all God's promises to come to pass in our lives. If you have been a believer for some time, you know the Christian journey is no stranger to waiting. In the midst of this time in our walk with God, we seek his guidance, provision, and healing. We look to him for answers, direction, and a glimpse of what lies ahead, the mysterious next thing that awaits us. But it is important for us to realize that this time is not spent in vain. It's a process through which God is working to shape us into individuals who mirror the life of Jesus. Just as Jesus patiently waited for the right moments, we too find ourselves in situations that test our patience and trust in God. As he calls us to wait, out of his deep love and wisdom, he increases our trust in him helping us to let go of our perceived control and reminding us of his divine timing. Waiting also serves to crucify the idols we may unknowingly hold on to. It forces us to ask whether our self-worth is tied solely to our achievements or if we can find our value in something greater. God's unwavering love for us. This is so that we can also say, like the Apostle Paul, I've learned by now to be quite content whatever my circumstances. I'm just as happy with little as with much, with much as with little. I've found the recipe for being happy whether full or hungry, hands full or hands empty. Isn't it frustrating to follow a God who constantly instructs us to wait on Him? Why is waiting such a part of spirituality? In the midst of waiting, we are humbled. The realization that we lack control over the timing of events exposes our vulnerability. It prompts us to acknowledge God's sovereignty and confront our own limitations. Humility takes center stage as we embrace the truth that we are not in charge, and pride gives way to a more accurate view of ourselves. King Solomon wrote, Whomever is patient has great understanding, but one who is quick-tempered displays folly. Proverbs 14 verse 29. Due to his patience, God finally blessed Abraham with a child named Isaac when he was 100 years old. Abraham waited a long time, but he became a father of many nations as promised. Hannah too was a great woman of faith who also waited upon the Lord to bless her with the fruit of the womb. She didn't give up and prayed that God will one day bless her with a child, and answer her prayer request, which eventually was answered. Job is another person in the Bible who waited on the Lord despite the horrible pain and suffering he went through in his life. As you know, Job was tested and he lost everything he had. In all his suffering, Job never gave up his faith or hope that the Lord will one day restore all that he had lost. Which the Lord eventually did. 
There are many such stories in scripture to encourage us during our time of waiting. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Patience is something God understands. After all, he deals with us 24-7. We can only imagine how much we test him weekly, daily, even hourly. Yet, he never wobbles under the weight. He has an endless supply of patience, and he's willing to share. When you find yourself struggling, here is a prayer for patience we can pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, Your word says that I should remember the days of long ago. Meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done for me. Lord, I haven't had the patience to rest at your feet and meditate on your word. I've been too impatient to wait on your will. I've gotten used to making things happen myself instead of waiting on you to guide my steps. Bring me back to those days when I hungered for your plans. Give me the patience to linger in your presence. Pause my racing thoughts and self-imposed time limits. Thank you for being the only one who can truly take away my urge to do life by myself. Thank you for showing me that putting you first is what's best for me. Please wrap your arms around me and don't ever let go. Slow my racing heart. Clear my spinning head. Calm my frantic thoughts. I need your patience to breathe through this moment and make it to the next. Thank you for being a God of the moment, a God who cares, a God able to guard my heart and mind. In Jesus' name. Amen.